Hey everyone, thanks for checking in. In this video, I'm gonna show you this edge banding machine. And if you ever thought about getting one, I'm gonna show you how it works and also several improvements that I've made to it to make it work even better. So check it out. This banding machine is made to be used with pre-glued edge banding be a big improvement over iron-on type banding if that's what you've been doing so let's take a closer look at this okay so this machine comes with a Steinel or Steenel heat gun it's really good it heats up really quick it also has a variable heat control here because you need different temperatures whether you're using a wood tape or if you're using a PVC tape so that's important. I'll talk more about that later. Uh, back here is the table that the edge band roll sits on. And the tape is fed into these guides. And you'll notice there's guides at the back. And then there's a set of guides here at the front. And this deflector here uh, blows the heat right onto the tape right there. And these guides can be adjusted. You just loosen those cap screws on the back and you can move them up and down. And once you get it adjusted, it's set. Like I haven't ever had to move it in three years. Um, so it works pretty good once you get it centered up on your workpiece. There's also a cutter here. And that's what you use to trim the edge band when you're about two inches away from the wheel. Now this wheel is what you press your workpiece up against to um, bond the tape to your to your workpiece, and so that's kind of the basics of the machine, and uh, that's what it looks like. I'm gonna show you a couple of improvements that I made to it that's really helped um, make it a more efficient machine. Uh, first of all is the table. It comes with a table that only comes out to the bottom of the or the front of the base here. So it's only like seven inches wide by roughly two feet long. And that's pretty pretty small. So what I did is I made a 12 inch wide by 36 roughly um, table and screwed it on here with the screws that came with it. And it gives me a much wider, more stable surface to use with it and if I when I make another one I'm probably gonna bring it out to here and I might add a couple more inches out here but you can really make it however you want but that helps a lot with just holding the piece in position especially when you get to larger pieces so that's one improvement another thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that the table is square to this wheel um, when you're pushing against it so the wheel has just a little bit of flex in it, so you want to you want to push against it like you're pushing a piece through, and you want it to be square to the table at that point. And to do that, I had to shim up um, this edge. I had to raise this up a little bit. So you can use like some playing cards; those don't compress, and shim this up. And I also added a screw in the center because. It was kind of doing this it was bowing up so this just pulls down tight to the shims making this all straight and all square to the wheel the whole way along so that's something you'll need to do when you get it is check to see if when you put some pressure against this are you square to the table um, the next thing that I did and that I noticed is you see you put your roll of edge banding on here and let's just run some through dry and watch this roll here. It pulls it and it just kind of moves sporadically around this and it's okay but sometimes it'll get hung up on a corner um, in different applications depending on the size of the roll. Like when you first start the roll is even bigger. Um, and it, it can cause some problems. So what I've done is I've just cut these discs. I've got like two or three of them 
for the different brands, the different companies that I get it from. And what that does is it just fits right over that and it centers this up so that as you're feeding your piece through, it just spins centered and doesn't get hung up on anything. So like I said, I've got like two or three of these from the different sizes of the cardboard ring that it's wrapped around for the different brands that I use and I just switch them out depending on which brand. So that's worked really well. Uh, now I'm going to show you what I've done here to the, the cutter area. Alright, if we take a closer look in here, you can see this white washer right here and that's a nylon washer. And what it comes with is metal washers there and also on the bottom down there. And what I noticed is that when I would use the cutter, the cutter runs right into the washer. The washer actually acts as a stop for the cutter and that dulled the blade down and made it really hard to cut, especially PVC edge banding. And so what I did is I just replaced it with uh, these nylon washers of the same diameter. And so now it doesn't hurt the cutter at all. Now the heat can sort of deform them a little bit, but I just loosen the screw. I can spin it 180 and reveal a fresh side to the cutter and I get more life out of it. And then I also keep a um, pack of them taped to the machine so I can replace them. But I really don't have to replace them that often. Um, and it makes the cutter last a lot longer. And then the second thing that I did here with the cutter is I took it apart. I took this off and um, loosened these screws here and pulled this blade straight out and I honed it on my sharpening stones like I do my chisels and got it quite a bit sharper. And that helps a little bit. Um, but it is hard. You have to hit it pretty hard to cut the PVC edge banding. If you're using wood tape, it cuts it no problem or melamine tape no problem but the PVC you got to hit it pretty hard to actually cut it but um, so those are two modifications that I also recommend uh, in the cutter area now to get started you want to make sure that the roll is on the table in a way that you see the glue that the glue is facing you so then all you do is just thread it into this guide until it comes out at the roller. All right, so we got the tape out to the roller. Now, at this point, you can't just turn the machine on and start banding. And the reason is because the heat deflector is right here and it's heating the edge band right back here, which means that this front three inches is not melted. The glue is not gonna stick to anything and that can cause you problems when you first start out. So what I do is I turn on the machine and then I pull this out until I see the glue melted and then press my workpiece against it and edge band it. So I'll show you what that looks like. So that's what the piece looks like. So when feeding the piece, the important things are to remember to start out in this position and turn the machine on and then slowly begin to pull the tape until you see the melted glue and then press your piece into that melted glue and feed it through and then the feed rate you just have to do, you have to experiment with it till you figure out the right feed rate because with P 
PVC edge banding, it can actually start to melt the PVC. With wood banding, you can have the heat higher and it won't hurt it, so you can move a little faster. But I have the heat on roughly medium, and you just gotta find that sweet spot in the feed rate that the glue's melting, but the edge banding is not. And then at the end, you watch, and I'm gonna just roll this back. After I've cut it and finished the piece, I'm just gonna roll this back to pull the end of the edge band back from the point of heat so it doesn't deform it and cause me trouble uh, on my next pass. So here's what that looks like. That's uh, one side edge banded. Well, that's it for now. I hope this video helped you understand the machine and how it works and the process for successful edge banding with it. And um, in the next video, I'm going to talk about the edge banding options as well as the tools and method to trim it. So check back soon for that video. And thanks for watching.